<clears throat> Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for joining the Bible class of the Church of Jesus Christ. We honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor our pastor, Bishop John T. Leslie Jr. and Lady Louise Leslie. Our assistant pastor, District Elder Robert Taylor and Sister Melinda Taylor. Our pastoral assistants, Evangelist Margaret Williams, Evangelist Doris Thompson. We'd like to greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Now we ask that you go ahead and like this series. Go ahead and like, comment, and share. Share, let's get the word out. Now, at this time, our pastor is going to come with the prayer, and then he will introduce our teacher. Then I'll come back with a few announcements, and then we'll hear back from Bishop Leslie for final remarks and the benediction. Now, let's receive our pastor, Bishop Leslie. Praise the Lord, everyone. Certainly, we thank the Lord for the opportunity he has given us to fellowship with each other over the word of God. Man shall not live by bread only but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let us pray. Father, in your precious name, Jesus, thank you so much for another opportunity you are giving us to hear your word. Your word is a lamp to our feet, is a light to our pathway. My God, and we're thanking you for your word because your word is life and your word is ammunition that we use when the enemy comes against us like a flood. Help us to esteem your word more highly than our necessary food. Bless this session and anoint our teacher. Give him exactly what we have need of and help us to hear so that our soul can live. We ask you to do this for us in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. And again, we thank the Lord for everyone that's a part of this Bible class session. Uh, the Bible class is for everyone. And everyone needs a Bible class. <laughs> and keep in mind, Bible class is that which we have need of. And it's also uh, our needs are addressed, my God, with our reception of the word of God. We hide it in our hearts that we may not sin against. We thank the Lord for our assistant pastor, this together, Robert Taylor. He's our teacher. My God, I'm going to turn right over to him. In the name of Jesus, God bless you, District Elder. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Bishop, and praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, we're getting a lot of opinions from you, Bishop and Philip. Uh, is, is, is everybody hear me okay? Can you yes. know? Can, yes. Is everybody hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, very mm -hmm. good. All right. Uh, uh, well, certainly we thank God for another day that he has blessed us, and it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed, and because his compassions fail not, but they knew every morning, greatest of faithfulness of God. We thank God for another day. Uh, you know, uh, it's many laid down last night, didn't get up this morning, but thank God that we're on this side of the ground this morning and this evening. Amen. We bless the Lord for his love and his kindness toward us. We give him all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Amen. We do want to honor and uh, make mention of our pastor this evening. The Honorable Dr. Bishop John T. Lester Jr., Lady Louise Les, we praise God for you. And this evening, I'm going to give honor to my wife this evening, <laughs> Sister, Sister Mel Linda. <laughs> Amen. We praise God for her. Great woman of God. I thank God for her. Amen. <laughs> Anybody put up with me, they got <laughs> they're a blessed individual. <laughs> Hey man, but we thank God. He's so he's been so good to us down through the years. And even this week, even though the week has just started, a couple of days, three days into it, we just thank God for his goodness unto us in Jesus' name. For all the great people of God that are on this in this Bible class this evening, those who are not, we praise God for each and every one of you. And I don't take it lightly, and I don't take it for granted. Uh, your presence in the Bible class. I thank God for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're, we're winding, winding down. down. We're winding, winding down. down. Uh, we're winding down <laughs> uh, on the subject matter of uh, maintaining a healthy and prosperous church. Maintaining a healthy and prosperous church. Uh, I tell you, the, the more you and and this is a this is a fact. The more you study, the more you search the Word of God, the more you find uh, to 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 deal with and to study and to research. Uh, concerning God's word, because his word is inexhaustible. Uh, you know, all of our minds in this world, uh, some seven odd billion of us, if all of us put our minds together on one subject matter, uh, and we would think, we would think with all of those minds that we would uh, have exhausted the subject of whatever it is in God's word. But 
uh, behold, all things become new. God knows how to flip, flip the switch and, 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 and show us some things that the seven billion didn't even see. That's just how great and how powerful and how wonderful the God that we serve is. I tell you, I, I, I'm, I'm so glad we're serving Jesus. I don't know what to do. Uh, and then again, I do know what to do is to keep on serving him for the rest of our lives. Uh, but we've been uh, looking at maintaining uh, a healthy and a prosperous church. And uh, our key subject, our key verse, brother, uh, is from uh, 3 John, verse number 2, <clears throat> where John says to uh, the beloved Gaius, uh, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, uh, even as our soul prospereth. And, and remember that that word prosper uh, does not always, I know we like to uh, associate prosperity uh, with money and, 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 and all of these fine things in life and what have you, but uh, God is more concerned uh, for us. He's, he, he's concerned about our welfare. He's concerned about uh, our health. He's concerned about our mind. He's concerned about our, this whole man of us. Uh, Paul said, I pray God that your whole body, soul and spirit uh, be, re be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord. And so God is concerned about this whole, this wholesome of, uh, is he's a holistic God. And he's concerned about all of us and, and he wants us to prosper, uh, in, uh, in our work. He wants us to prosper in our plans. He wants us to prosper in our purposes, in our ministry, in our families, and so forth and so on. He wants total prosperity with us uh, as children of God to prosper in him as he sees fit and as he blesses us. Uh, and so, uh, again, this word prosperity, it also it relates to being secure, the security of God, the welfare of God. Uh, it talks about uh, uh, all of these things that God has for us uh, in this life and in this world. And he wants us to be uh, not just saved, but he wants us to be completely saved. Uh, he wants us to give us abundant life, not just life, but abundant life. Uh, he wanted it to be super abundant. And so this is the kind of God that we serve. And many times we don't search God's word to know enough to, to, to know exactly what does he have for us in this life. Uh, you know, it's more to being saved than just, than just being saved. And although that's the, that's, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the, that's the contingency, uh, but all of these other things that are byproducts of just being saved, uh, God has for us in this life. And he wants us to be happy. He wants us to be uh, uh, jovial. He wants us to be anointed. He wants all of this for, for us. And we have to search his word in order to find out all of these. Remember, David said, I uh, meditate in God's word both day and night. Uh, you don't have to necessarily be reading 24 seven, but uh, when the scripture, when the scripture joggles your mind, then uh, just let it saturate your soul and, and just meditate on it. Uh, Lord, what all of, what are you trying to show me in this scripture? Hallelujah. What are you trying to show me? How, good does it do to me right now or even in the future uh what, what lord what are you showing me in this word here and so god wants us to prosper in all things and not just be saved but he wants us to be saved and have abundant life remember jesus said that i, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly uh, and is that to say we're going to be rich? Is that to say we're going to uh, uh, have our, everything that we need in life? Uh, keep in mind, God said, I will supply your every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so uh, we have to do, search God's word in order for us to maintain a healthy and prosperous church. Last week, I got stuck. I got stuck. And I want to go back there on the 73rd song. You know, uh, what is it? How's that commercial go? I'm, well, I'm stuck on Band-Aid called Band-Aid Stuck on Me. Well, I, I got stuck in that 73rd song because uh, I, I and I really didn't finish where I wanted to go in this particular song because uh, I realized that uh, you just can't rush through God's word. Uh, you know, and as you and, and you teachers know that. Uh, you you wish you had more time to teach. You wish you had you wish you had you know another hour maybe. You wish you had uh, uh, you wish you had a said this and you wish you had a said that. But uh, I, I believe that we say what we say 
uh, at the time that we say it, and, and, and that's what God required of us to say at that particular time. But uh, I do want to go back to that 73rd Psalm and, uh, and just bring out a couple of more things that I saw in there that the Lord triggered my mind about that I, I see that's necessary to share with you this evening. Uh, and so if you would go there in that 73rd Psalm, turn with me there, if you will, please. Psalm 73. And again, it's not the 73rd chapter, as sometimes we say, but it's the 30, 73rd Psalm. This is the song book of Israel. This, these are, this is the book they use to, to sing their songs. Uh, and, and, the, and the further you get in these songs, the further you get in them, uh, the more intense these psalms become. Uh, and so this particular psalm is landed in the area of the uh, the Levitical, the Levitical Psalms. Uh, keep in mind, the, the Psalm book of Israel is divided into five, into five sections uh, in uh, correlation with the, uh, with the Pentateuch. You have the uh, Genesis Psalms, you have the, uh, the Exodus Psalms, you have the Leviticus Psalms, you have the, uh, the Number Psalms, and then you have the, what's the last one? You have the Deuteronomy Psalms. And so uh, this book of Psalms is divided in five sections. There are five, uh, five books in this, in this, that completes this book of Psalms. Uh, and we are, this, this 73rd Psalm uh, is the beginning of book three of the book of Psalms. Uh, and in book three, we're, we're getting into the Levitical part of uh, the Psalms <clears throat> of the book of Psalms. And here in this 73rd Psalm, verse number one says, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as of a pure heart, of a clean heart. But as for me, Asaph said, and that's another thing, this, this Psalm here is written by, not by David, not by Solomon, uh, but, but by Asaph. And Asaph was one of the chief musicians uh, in the orchestra, I wanna say orchestra, uh, the day of David. Uh, and so Asaph says, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart, even to such as are of a clean heart. God is good to us. You know, and we, we coined the phrase, God is good all the time and all the time God is good. And it's true. This is true. Uh, and he's good. It, even if we're not good to him, he's good to us. Uh, because he allows the sun to rise upon us, to shine upon us every day. He sends rain from heaven upon us periodically. And so God is good to the saved and the sinner. He's good to all of us. He's good to all of his creation uh, because he created everything. So God, he makes him good. He's good to all. And he can't help but to be good because just that's his nature. That's his nature to be good. That's one of the moral attributes of, attributes of God uh, concerning him. And that is he's, he's, his goodness. He's good. He's good. Uh, and verse number two says, but as for me, Asaph said, my feet were almost gone and my steps had well and I slipped uh, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I was envious of the, as of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Uh, Asaph is saying to, to, to the Lord that look, as good as as much as we have been serving you, as much as I have been serving you, uh, when I looked over there and see how the wicked were prospering, and, and, and the saints were not prospering as such, you know, uh, you know, the adversary tries to play that in, in our mind, play on our minds with that kind of a circumstance. You know, he he allows us, and he he throws all of this. Uh, this good stuff, you know, what, what appears to be the, all of this good stuff, all of this lavish stuff in our eyes and uh, entices us. Uh, and, and he wants, to, he's trying to get us uh, to be drawn away of the things that we see, but uh, we can't allow ourselves to be drawn away because every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You understand? Every man is drawn away uh, uh, when, he's, when, he's, when he's drawn away and, and he's enticed, drawn away of his own lust and he's enticed. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with being enticed, but don't, but look, when, when, you feel, when you feel like you're being enticed, keep it moving. 
As I said before, keep it moving because what is happening is the adversary is trying to show us something that we can get involved in that would cause us to leave God. And we have to be careful of those kinds of things. And I was just thinking that uh, over these last couple of three years and while we're in this pandemic, that the adversary has played havoc on the church. Hear what I'm saying? The adversary has played havoc on the church. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost. The adversary has played havoc on the church because he's thrown all of these things in front of us, uh, things that look luxurious and look lavished and look uh, fancy and look uh, like uh, some things that, you know, maybe we can get our hands on. But the adversary is trying to draw us away from God. And we have to be careful of that kind of thing. That's why it's important for us uh, to stick close to God, to hang in there, to, to continue in prayer, continue in, in fasting and continue in studying God's word, continue in meditating in God's word day and night. Because if we don't, we will lose ourselves with the things that the adversary has shown us. And Asaph almost got lost. He says, I, I was envious at the foolish and my feet had well now slipped. Lord, have mercy. He had well now, you know, somebody asked Bishop Bell the question. And I'm told this. I didn't, I don't know this for sure, but I'm told this. Uh, that somebody asked Bishop Bell a question. Uh, Bishop Bell, when we see uh, these pretty girls, uh, is it okay to look at them? And his reply, as I was told this, uh, his reply, Bishop Bell, and this sounds just like him, uh, Bishop Bell replied and said, look once and not again. <laughs> you understand? Look once and not again. Because if you continue to look at the thing that stares your inner, that you, stares your inner being, you will become overwhelmed and you will become overtaken in those things. You understand what I'm saying? Understand what I'm saying? And so we have to be careful of the things that the adversary tries to lure us with because he means us no good. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, look at what God is trying to lure us with and trying to do in our lives. He's try, God is trying, he's trying to fulfill his purpose in us because he which have begun a good thing in you, he's going to perform it until the day of Christ. But we have to lend ourselves to God and what God is doing in our lives in order for God to fulfill his purpose in our life. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Let's keep on reading a little bit because I'm trying to get somewhere in the 73rd Psalm. Verse number four, for there are no bands in their death and their strength is firm. Uh, they are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. And what, 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 what is happening here is that Asaph sees the welfare of the wicked. And he's, 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 be, he's coming to a point where he's almost overtaken with it. He sees that they're healthy, they're strong, uh, they're rich, uh, they're, 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 they're nurtured. Uh, you know, their children look good, uh, they're, they're, they're successful, they're prosperous, but remember, uh, our, you can only be secure when we are in Christ Jesus. We can only be secure when we are in Christ Jesus. Outside of Christ, we're not really secure. But being in him, we're secure. We don't have to worry about the adversary as long as we stay in Christ. And this is not the, this is not the doctrine of eternal uh, security. But we're only, as Bishop uh, Gus Swain once said, we're only eternally secure as long as we stay eternally secure. As long as we stay saved, that's how secure we are in God. Verse number six. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out at, with fatness. Uh, they have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily because of who they are and what they got. Uh, they, they're arrogant in their spirit. and They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walk it through the earth because they think they're somebody. They think they got it made. They think they, uh, they, they are this, that, and the bag of chips. They think they're all of that. But really, they're, in the, they're in a, on the losing side because they don't have God. But Asaph does. 
Sometimes we complain about what we don't have. Have you ever considered what you do have? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, have you ever considered what you do have? If we have Christ Jesus, he's more than this world could ever give us. Some people, as the song say, love houses and land, some silver and gold. But these things do they perish and they forget about their soul. But we would rather have Jesus. I love that song, Brother Philip. I'd rather have Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's become a theme song on Bible class night, y'all. Let's keep on reading a little bit. Therefore, verse number 10, verse number nine, brother, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. They don't care anything about God. But here we are, we're serving God. It seems like we can't get ahead. One thing comes after another. As soon as we get rid of one thing, here comes something else. But could it be that God is trying to build us up? Could it be that God is trying to establish a relationship with us? Could it be that God is trying to get us to establish a, a solid and consistent prayer life? Could it be? But yet we look at the things that we don't have and look at the unsaved, what they do have. And what happens is this right here. We try to mimic what they have. I'm going to tell you, you can't live like the Joneses if you ain't got the Joneses money. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? You can't live like them if you ain't got what they got. Elder Finger said one time, and some of you may remember this. Elder Finger said, look, if you, if you need $20,000 from the Lord and all you have is $1,000, whether it was the purchase of a house or car, whatever it was, if you need $20,000 and all you have is $1,000, he said, put that $1,000 in the offering and look for God to bless you with the $20,000. But see, we don't think in those kind of realms at times. We look, we look at the here and the now. But look, we're going somewhere. And as one songwriter said, the best is yet to come, y'all. His best is yet to come. Verse number 10, therefore his people returneth hither and the waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? Lord, have mercy. Look how arrogant they are. They don't know God. They, they, don't, they don't know the things of God, but yet the God's children know about him and know him. And yet we're envious of the foolish. We, we, we're, we're saddened because we don't have what they have. Behold, verse number 12, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in the riches. Behold, they are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. And so why do we have to covet what they have? Why do we have to be envious? Why do we have to want what they want or what they got? If God is saying they're ungodly and they prosper in the world, he didn't say they prosper in him. They might feel secure of the things that they have in the world, but they're not secure in God. They're not prospering in God. But here we are, we are. Verily, verse number 13, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency, Asaph says. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. This thing was getting to him because he don't have what they have. It's eating his guts because he don't have what they have. But we can't worry about what we don't have. We can't worry about what the world is doing, what the world has, how the world is, is prospering, how the world is getting over. Because that is not God's way for the church. It's not God's way for the children of God. And so we can't worry about how they're doing it. We got to do it the way we do it. You understand? We got to play our own tune. We got to, we got to sing our own song. We got to preach our own word. I appreciate that woman that preached this past Sunday. Sister Jamie, she told, she told it like it was. 
You know, you know, we preach all kinds of stuff. Now I'm talking about apostolic preachers. You've heard them. They preach all kinds of things. But look, which the coming of the Lord is so near. We're trying to get people saved, y'all. Yes, we we want to buy products of salvation too, but our, our, our utmost and our, and, and our foremost uh, commitment is to try to get people saved. That's why, that's why uh, we want people to come down to the altar, get prayer, receive the Holy Ghost, go in that, go in that virtual altar room, go in there. Oh my God, you want the Holy Ghost? You need prayer? You need to touch and agree with somebody on something that is needful in your life? Go in that, that prayer altar and, and touch and agree with those, those ministers of the gospel and, and look for God to bless you like never before. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't have to be envious. You know, I think about it sometimes. You know what? And, and, and you know, we, we like to use examples of, of those in the Bible, you know, those men and women in, in, the, in the Bible. But, you know, look in our present day. There are those in our present day, the shoulders who we stand on top of. There are those in the shoulders that they stood on top of and the shoulders that they stood on top of in our present day, in this generation. Who have stood against dignitaries, who have stood against presidents and prime ministers. And so we don't have to, we don't necessarily have to go and look at those characters in scripture, even though everything is written for our admonition and our learning that we through comfort of the scripture might have hope. But look at those in our present time. We've had some great men and women of God to cross our pathways who love and enjoy serving the Lord and yet love and enjoy serving him and have taught us how to love and enjoy serving the Lord. And so there are examples, just as we have to be examples for this next generation. Let's keep on reading. Behold, they are the ungodly, verse number 12, who prosper in the world. They increase in riches, verse number 13. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. Asaph said, I don't want to say anything that's going to bring a reproach upon the children of this, of this generation. And not only that, but let's go a little bit further. I don't want to say anything or feel any kind of way that's going to bring a reproach upon the God that saved me. One of those commandments, take not the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Don't serve other images. There's nothing you can liken God to. But see, he said he's been chastened. His chastisement was eating him up. But God chastened him. But look, though, no, let's go a little bit further than that. Verse number 15, if I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. This ate at me even more so than the thing that I was envious of. To think that the things that I say or do would bring a reproach on my generation, it was more painful for me to think or to say something like that to them as it would as, as the thing that I was envious, envious of. And this next verse is where most of us get stuck on band-aids. <laughs> because we don't let the band-aids stick on us. Verse number 17. He said, it wasn't until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I therein. Isn't that something? It took, in other words, it took for me to go to church. 
a place that, uh, that, 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 that some of the saints of God, and I'm talking globally, a place that where some of the saints of God ain't even thinking about going back to. When David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire where? In his temple. Because in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. He shall set me up upon a rock. But it's necessary that we as children of God, <laughs> we got to make it to the house, y'all. There are no ifs, ands, and buts about it. There, there, is no, there are no replacements for the house of God. And quite frankly, you know, <laughs> somebody said the other day, I I'm tired of Zoom meetings. <laughs> you understand? And, and, I, and look, there's nothing wrong with this. But don't let it be a replacement unless it really needs to be a replacement. Because one, one of our real problems is we don't want it. We know we made up our mind. We're not going back to the house. Got my mind made up to serve the Lord. <laughs> it is important. Asaph said, it wasn't until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then, not before, but then is when I understood therein. And if I had been carried away, envying what they have, Feeling, feeling guiltless for receiving what they have, then I too would be categorized in this particular verse of their end. What is their end? Their end is, is out of the presence of God. Their end is, is not in the presence of God. But there is, their end is <laughs> eternal destruction. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes the things that we covet after and the things that we want, God knows that if, if, if he blesses with that, we, we'll stop serving him. But my prayer, Lord, I don't want anything that I can't handle. I don't want anything that will stop me to lose sight on who you are and lose sight on the one that blessed me. Because if I ever, if I ever think that these blessings are coming from the Lord, they are not coming from the Lord and they're coming from what I, I've done, what I've achieved, who I am, what I got, then I too would be classified as foolish and wicked. But it's imperative that we as children of God, we have to go to the house of God. Now, barring anything that, that's, that's keeping you from there, then this right here is, is the result. And this right here is a, uh, is, is a product that, that can be used in order to steal uh, as much as you can. Uh, hang in there with the ministry. But what this does, not being in the house, you know, you, you might get the word on the internet. You might get the word, but you will not get the ministry of. And the ministry of the church of the living God is to be in the presence with the other saints and to enjoy the fellowship and the presence of God while you're there. So Asaph said, until I went to the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein, surely thou didst set them in, look at this, he set them, God did this, y'all. 
set them in slippery places. In other words, uh, God is saying that you, you better recognize. <laughs> As uh, Snoop Dogg say in his commercial, uh, he says, uh, somebody called him Slim. So he says, Slim was one of my old names. He said, you better ask somebody. <laughs> God said, God said, you, you better recognize who I am because I'm the one that has the power to destroy both body and soul and cast it into hell. So God said, God set them in slippery places. Thou canst cast them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors as a dream when one awaketh so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. God says, I'll mock you, at, I'll mock you in your scorn. You'll be calling out my name. I, I'm, I'm calling them back. I'm going to echo what you're saying. Oh, help, Lord. I'm going to holler back, help, Lord. They didn't want his help when he would help them. But now when they see that all of this terror is coming upon them, now they want to holler help, Lord. As a dream, verse number 20, when one awaketh so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image, verse 21. Thus my heart was grieved and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou hast shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive to me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. In other words, Asaph said, look, I, I came to myself like that prodigal son, and he came to himself. Asaph said, I came to myself. I realized that, look, what they have don't mean a hill of beans compared to what I have. And what I have in God and with God is more than I could ever imagine. And the beauty of it is, we ain't seen nothing yet. But God, right now, he wants us to be healthy and prosperous and maintain, support, continue in the word of God so that when he comes back for his church, that we'll be ready to go back with him when he comes. Let's finish this out. Verse number 26, my flesh and my heart fail it, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou shalt hast destroyed all them that go a horn from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. And so you see how important it is as Asaph gives us a, a, a vivid example of uh, the reason why we should stick closer to God and, and become and become more uh, more relational to Him and have more communion with Him is because when we look over and see that what the world is doing and what the world have and how the world is accomplishing and how good the world seems like they are, God is even better than that to us. But we have to understand and realize that look. God has my entire welfare concern. He's concerned about my entire welfare and everything that is attached to me. God is concerned that all of that prosper and be in health, even as my soul prospers. And so we can't be looking across the fence. You know, there's, the, the grass is not green across the fence. Some have found that out and have found it to be a, a, a lie from the pit. Sometimes what appears to be 
green. Listen, it's only a mirage. When you get on that side, you realize that look, that ain't that's not the color I saw. <laughs> and so God, He wants us, He wants us to prosper in the way that He would have us to prosper. Now, let me show you something else. Let's turn in this book of Psalms. Let's go to the 122nd Psalm. Psalm 122, 122. We're following that trend and following that thought that it's important for us to go to the house of God. If we're gonna maintain a healthy and prosperous church, remember, it begins with us individually because we, re we really are the church. We are, all of us who have been born again of the water and of the spirit, we are the invisible organism called the church of the living God. And we assemble ourselves at a building where we come to enjoy the fellowship and the communion with God and the saints of God. And so one, Psalm uh, 122, look at what it says here. David says, I was glad. And this is one of those songs of degrees. Okay, this is one of those songs of degrees. And, and this, if I'm not mistaken, is in the Deuteronomy portion of the, of the book of Psalms. Okay. Um, I was glad, David said, when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now see, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot make that statement. We cannot testify to that statement. We cannot declare that statement if we never go or refuse to go or relinquish in going to the house of God. That's one scripture that we can take out of our vocabulary, out of our portfolio. But David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is anybody glad to be, go to the house? I get upset when I can't go. But look at what it says here. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of God. And we all know that the house of the Lord is a place of judgment. It's a place, look, everything that we need for this life, we can find it at the house of the Lord. Because as Peter once said, Judgment must first begin at the house of God. And if it began with us, what shall be the end of those who don't believe the truth? The sinner and the ungodly, where, where would they stand if judgment begins with us? Because those who are saved, we shall scarcely be saved. That doesn't give us any flexibility or any room to play around. Somebody say, if you were going to backslide, you should have did that earlier. No, no, you shouldn't either. No, you shouldn't have done that earlier. Don't ever, don't ever let the thought of backsliding come to your mind. Because God has been so good and too good for us. Verse number five again says, for there are set thrones of judgment and the thrones of the house of David. You know, we come to the house of God. We come to get fortified. We come to get judged. We come to, uh, to find out, Lord, you know, where are we in you? We, we, come, we come to uh, enjoy the fellowship. There are many things that we receive at the house of God when we come to the house of God. But this next scripture lets us know, verse, verse number six, he says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. 
anybody who prays for the peace of Jerusalem, God is saying to us, we shall prosper if we love them. We shall prosper that love thee. That word prosper, again, it talks about the security of God. We will become and will be secure if we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We've heard that down the year, down, down, the, uh, down through the years. That was one of uh, uh, that was one of Deacon Barnes's uh, 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 pet scriptures, I believe it was. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem; they shall prosper that love thee. But you, do you want to be secure in God? Do you want to prosper in God? then we must learn how to maintain what we have in and with God if we're going to be prosperous and be successful in God. And so he says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and pro look at this, and prosperity within thy palaces. If God does this for David, who has been declared to be the, uh, the, uh, the father of Jesus, according to the lineage, because Jesus is going to be the next son of David to sit on the throne of David in Jerusalem. And as uh, I believe uh, Evangelist Wheeler once told us a couple of Sundays ago, that uh, since that last king in Jerusalem, the last king to sit on the throne, since then, there have been no kings called kings in Israel. They've been called other names as prime ministers and such. But not kings. And so Jesus is going to be the next king that's set on the throne in Jerusalem. So peace be within thy walls. And prosperity, once again, that word prosperity, prosperity, success, being successful, being secure, being, being having the welfare of God laid upon you because you have prayed for the peace of Jerusalem and being part of the church, peace and prosperity is within our walls, y'all. But we have to learn how to maintain this healthy, and prosperous church. Let's finish this one out. Verse number eight, for my brethren and companions sake, I will now say peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. And again, seeking the good of one another tells us that we want one another to be prosperous. We, want, we all want to be successful in God. We are our brother's keeper or our sister's keeper, if you please. I want to help my brother and sister any kind of way that I can. Any way that will cause them also to be prosperous and to be successful. And so it's all about what God wants for us and how we deal with what he given, he's given us. But as we all galvanize, galvanize our energies together, as we come together as the church or as the body of Christ, even down to the local assembly, as we galvanize our efforts in helping one another to become more like Christ, then that's a sign of a healthy church. That's the sign of a prosperous church. That's the sign of a church that's going to do exploits. And so it's helping one another. Not talking down on this one somebody or, or on the saints, not, not saying, well, let them do it. But all of us, many hands, as the cliche goes, many hands make light work. If I can help my brother across the country, then let's do that. 
He might need to hear your voice or she might need to hear some comfort that comes from you. Our energy is first directed to home and then they go abroad. But we want to maintain a healthy and a prosperous church. I'm going to stop right there. Want to, are the, want to know, are there any questions or comments that anyone would like to make? Any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? Okay, if not, then let us pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, again, for our time spent together this evening. And we thank you for the, the word of God. Word, word, in the word of God, we have a hiding place. But Lord, help us and show us how to be more prosperous in you, Lord, and how we can, uh, our souls can be more healthy. Souls can be more prosperous. Lord, help us to be helpers one of another. Let the strong bear the infirmity of the weak and let the weak say I'm strong. And Lord, we'll be ever grateful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory because it belongs to you anyway. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen, Dr. Phil. Amen. Thank you, District Elder Tiller. Another powerful session, powerful Bible class. Thank you so much. All right, our announcements. Elder, District Elder Taylor was talking about coming out to church. Well, let's come on out to church. Join us this Sunday, 8 a.m. for our 8 a.m. service, early morning service, virtual and in person. Yes, we'll be in person and as well as on our Facebook and our YouTube channel. So join us this Sunday at 8 a.m. Also join us this Sunday for 1030, uh, our Sunday school, using the same meeting code, access code that you use for this session. Join us this Sunday for 8 a.m. service and Sunday school at 1030. Also, this Sunday will be our tap-in service. All right, this is the third Sunday. So we will have in-person service at 11.30 a.m. So join us this Sunday, in-person service, 11.30 a.m. And God willing, we'll see you this time next week, same time, same location. God bless you, and we love you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Certainly, we've had a powerful class tonight talked by District Elder Taylor. And I mean, powerful. And this, uh, all, all of the subject matters that was covered uh, addressing us and our spiritual walk with God. That's what Bible class is all about. It, it, it really deals with us to see what's going on in our life and any changes that need to be made, make them. <laughs> and the, the verse that, that I trickled in on, and it was Psalm 121, oh no, Psalm 122 and one. And, and, and David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, this is coming from somebody that didn't duck church. Praise him. No, no, no. He was glad. Anytime it was time to go to church, uh, he was glad that it was time. And that's why when you are part of church, a booming church, praise him like we have, and we have different areas where different ones uh, can really deal with different signs and wonders that they have and, and different manners of of uh, worshiping the Lord, praise him. And here the Lord gives us the opportunity to pick and choose, praise him. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. When we come to the house of God, we are looking for that which will help us spiritually, praise him. Now we've taken care of the cabbage and cornbread and black eyed peas, praise him. But when you come to the house of God, you're interested in being fed the word of God. And that's what goes on in Church of Jesus Christ. All of the teaching that we get via Bible class and all of the teaching that we get via Sunday school. And, and this is a part of our spirit to that. And take the advantage of it like you're doing. Praise him and apply God's word to your life because the Lord it wants you to be able 
to respond to someone that comes into your pathway and asks you something pertaining to the spirit of God, asks you something pertaining to the word of God. And the, and the Bible wants us to give a reasonable answer to what the person is uh, trying to get to be addressed. And that's why it's so important for us to get God's word so that when we are approached by somebody and if somebody knows that you go to church and whatnot, they're going to approach you many times with a Bible question and you want to be able to respond so that you can be a help because we are helpers one of another. Thank God for uh, these powerful Bible classes that this Elder is teaching. Take your time, Mr. Gelder, and, and help yourself. Praise him because we need God's word. God's word is, is forever settled in heaven and everyone should be a part of receiving God's word. All right, keep in mind everything that uh, if, if Deacon, uh, the elder Philip told us to do, praise him and, and we have a heavy schedule of things that are part of our uh, receiving the word that the Lord has for us. And let us do it skillfully and do it without hesitancy. Praise him. God bless you. God bless you. And let us pray. Father, in your precious name, Jesus, again, we're so glad to be in Bible class. Thank you so much for your word that you have given us tonight. Help us, Lord Jesus, to apply your word to our lives so that when the enemy comes against us like a flood, we can lift that word up against the enemy. Bless us, Lord, and let us be a blessing uh, to those that we come in contact with. We ask you to do this for us. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. And peace be unto the saints. Peace be, peace be unto the saints.